right now. Um, I'm a airline pilot for uh, Delta Airlines, and uh, I'm a captain on the Airbus A319, 320, and 321 uh, here in Atlanta, Georgia. And I vividly remember seeing an F-16 fly over my head and uh, the rumble from the engines and seeing the uh, afterburner literally, literally shook my my soul. And I knew that's what I wanted to do. Ever since then, I wanted to be a I wanted to be a pilot. And we all remember the first time when we soloed an airplane. Right. And so I oh, let's be honest, there have been times where or there were times where, you know, African-Americans couldn't fly airplanes. Um, they just wouldn't let people like, they wouldn't let African Americans fly planes. That my grandfather wanted to fly airplanes. Uh, they told him no. There's just no way around it. Uh, women have been told that they can't fly airplanes, right? And it, there's other communities too. So from there, it's been um, to explain this. It's uh, having uh, definitely having my grandfather tell me this story you kind of get this mindset of, okay, I know I can, I can fly. I know I can do this. I know I can fly. Right. To let them know that, yeah, it's, it's, it's for everyone. Getting into aviation can be, uh, to be a pilot is very expensive. The number of scholarships that are out there, um, especially if it's, let's just say it's directly to minorities. Um, there just aren't enough of those scholarships for the amount or the abundance of people that want to do it. You have to be confident in yourself. I felt like I had to, I've had to really work <laughs> to get to where I am today, not going through the process by yourself. I will say that there have been many of my friends um, that I have relied on. To, not everyone can understand what it's like going through flight training or going through the process as an African-American. Uh, people can't understand how it might be for uh, for a female, for a woman to go through it because there's there's just differences. And so having someone there that understands to help support you through that process will not only help with your confidence, but help you go through um, some of the trials that one may experience. When I saw an African-American pilot for the first time, and it really made me, uh, help me to say, oh, well, if they can do it, I know I can do it. Getting diversity into the flight deck will only help that younger generation of, of aviators who are interested and they actually see the diversity in the flight deck to make them want to do it too. It really does say a lot when you do see a woman in the flight deck, when you see an African-American, when you see two, I mean, a captain and a co-pilot that are African-American or, or women too. And as this younger generation of aviators that are coming through, when they see that, they're like, oh, well, I know I can do that too. Well, African-American people don't fly airplanes. Like, yeah, we do. There's quite a few of us that actually fly airplanes. And I've had a few younger kids come into the flight deck and they're really inspired. And that's what we want to do is inspire others who can do it. My most proud accomplishment has been uh, purchasing my own airplane. Uh -huh. you know, I, I really want to uh, help expose others to aviation, especially in the African-American community. I want to be able to uh, either start a foundation or maybe even I've had thoughts of uh, starting a school, a flight school to uh, allow uh, people who are, I don't say less fortunate, but people that aren't able to afford the full price of uh, flight training and give them the opportunity to do flight training at a reduced cost to get them into the industry, but to also have a career in it because um, there's being a pilot is great. It's something that I've always wanted to do. And now that I'm here, it's just, I want to bring other people with me and uh, get them involved too. So, but I was introduced to it and I fell in love with it. And I want other people to experience it and, and get the feeling that I do. I hope that I'm able to expose not only just to being a pilot and being aviation, but exposed to the other avenues of what being a pilot that you can do, like aerobatics. My name is Jared Hodge, and I'm an outstanding aviator. Yeah, for sure. So my name is Annie Vogel. Yeah, so I own a digital marketing company that also specializes in copywriting. 
uh, but we support aviation brands exclusively. My parents immigrated from Poland in the 80s, and we traveled back to Poland very often when I was really young. Um, and I still remember like the KLM jumbo jets and just getting on it and being totally fascinated by airplanes. Wow. Now that would be something cool because you can still like experience so much of the world, but also it's highly technical. It looks really fun. I, I don't have anyone in my family that's in aviation. So it was quite complicated to kind of figure it all out. Suddenly your instructor is like sneaking out the side door <laughs> and saying, peace, you've got this. But it's, it's a really empowering feeling to be confident in yourself and know that you can handle it. Wow, I was like, I, I really got this <laughs> because it offers this like surreal experience every time you're up there. Um, it, like, I'm sure that, you know, every pilot feels this way, but there's something really special about flying very like lower to the ground and being able to see everything. And for those few moments, however long you're up there, it, it's just the whole world melts away. And it doesn't, and nothing that's happening on the ground matters anymore because the priority is flying that aircraft. Um, and the idea of being able to see things that most people could only ever dream of, it's just a wild adventure. Don't let others' opinions create doubt in yourself. Stick to your gut impulse and do what feels right by you. Another one of the roadblocks that I encountered was definitely financial. I think that that's a huge roadblock for most pilots. Um, it's really, really disheartening sometimes when you're like, wow, this is uh, more debt than I've ever taken on in my life. And so it's, it's overwhelming. There is this idea of equality. Um, and the reality is, is that like life is never balanced or equal. Like, like things are so backwards and we've come such a long way in such a short amount of time. There isn't as much diversity in aviation is primarily a lack of role models. Um, I mean, you're inspired by what you see. And I'm, I'm hopeful that it only continues to grow over the coming years. When putting that into the cockpit, I think maybe maybe that could create like a, you know, a better environment. And I travel a ton and I get to fly really cool airplanes. I get to meet incredible people. And what I really love about that is that I offer a female voice. So in terms of my goals for the future, it would be to continue serving as like a voice for women in aviation, to continue inspiring people. Um, the amount of messages that I get from people all over the world, women in particular saying, hey, you know, I'm interested in aviation, what do I do, is astounding. And so I can only imagine if you were to collectively add that, those people with everybody else um, in terms of like every other like social media influencer, who has people reaching out to them. Um, I think that that social media is such an incredible tool and it's incredible, incredibly important tool in promoting aviation to future generations. My name is Annie Vogel and I'm an outstanding aviator. So my name is Leah Kamaromi and I finally got to put my hands on a, the controls of an airplane and actually fly. And it just like gave me the most amazing butterflies. And I just was very fulfilled and awed by the experience. So I was like, I have to do this for the rest of my life. I'm really happy that I found it because when you find something that lights you up, it obviously makes your life better. Um, and I feel like everyone should have a career where they find something that makes you joyful. But I think that it makes me happy because it's where I am. I feel free. I don't feel... You find something like that that just sets you on fire. You want to do it for the rest of your life. And there's nothing that's going to stop you from doing that. Is that it's not all sunshines and roses. Like, it's going to be really hard. And there's going to be a lot of people that are going to tell you you can't do it. And... um getting into it there's going to be probably a lot of people who are like you want to be a pilot like you're just a girl you just you know you're just 14 you're just 15 you're just whatever age you are they're always going to people are always going to judge you for your age or your gender or your dreams I mean people's judgment is their form of entertainment for your life and it's not okay but being a flight instructor at 18 and teaching people as a female they think that you're not qualified and you have to show them
Um, you have to just be confident in what you can do. And whenever they get themselves in a screwy situation, as students do, and you save their butt, you're like, I do know more than you. <laughs> because diversity is what is, first of all, needed and should be the norm. And that we are just as good of pilots, if not better. So change will happen and it is happening. So that all I want to do is fly for the rest of my life. I was going to get my pilot's license if it killed me. I want to, sh I want my favorite thing is being able to take um, someone for their first flight. The, just the look on their face is exactly what I feel every time I fly. Accomplished my dreams of being a pilot and now I can show other women that they can also do that. I'm Leah Kamaromi and I'm an outstanding aviator. My name is Jessica Birch. My current occupation and position, I am the morning meteorologist at CBS News Bay Area in San Francisco, and I'm also a Blackhawk pilot for the California Army National Guard. I don't necessarily fly for a living full or I don't fly for a living full time. However, I do fly for the California Army National Guard. Oh, I got a flying bug pretty early on. I was 15 years old when I took my first, you know, discovery flight. And that's all it takes is a discovery flight, right? If you know, you know. And um, women in aviation, you know, there's not many of us. And I talk about that all the time on air. But it was a good experience. And it really, oh my gosh, there is nothing more liberating than doing your first solo. And then the next most liberating thing is doing your solo cross country because that's empowering right there. I, humans weren't designed to be in the air, yet we found a way to be able to do it. There's nothing more beautiful than flying through clouds or, you know, popping up through a you know, VFR on top or just just being in a place that you feel like you shouldn't be, but yet you belong so much. And flying for me is just that sense of um, you realize how small you are. Humility will take you very far. Um, and the aircraft and I'm in the military too. Look at the lack of diversity. I was the only female that commissioned a group of 80 men. I was the only female that graduated my flight school class in a group of, that was a class of 60. We're trying to crack the code. We're trying to break it and it's getting better year by year. Let's change that. Let's build that path. Let's continue to build that path. Let's make it grow so that more women have the opportunity to. Forget the fact that you're a woman. Forget the fact that they're men. Do you love it? Do you love being in the sky? Are you geeking out about the avionics? Are you geeking out about your logbook adding hours day by day? That's what you should be focused on. The passion. There is a woman in aviation. If I could get more people aware of that, that would be a huge um, benefit to this industry. But the woman in aviation one, that's huge for me. Always has been, always will be. If I would have known about these programs at a young age, I feel like I would be light years ahead of where I am now. And I'm competing with myself in that sense, so. Hey, my name is Jess and I'm an outstanding aviator. Um, but really the first thing that inspired me was I sat up front in the cockpit one day and we uh, flew to the beach in a plane and I got to like see how everything kind of worked and operated. So from there, my dad got me um, my first flight lesson. So it just kind of spiraled from there. Personally, I didn't feel ready. I was just like, I don't know if I want to fly a plane by myself. I can't really describe just like, I can't believe I did that kind of thing. It wasn't something I ever saw myself doing younger in life for some reason I'm not for sure but once I like got into it and I think the learning process as well there's a lot of people who are scared of flying or you know have anxiety of flying addicting I guess is the right word I think that there is like a stigma to pilots from just like way back in the day you know like it was a male dominated industry there's such a sh like lack and shortage of pilots that I think if you could like get more people involved with it. Like, you know, even just like introductory flights, stuff like that, um, it could, you know, take that problem away. So I think a good way to change just the whole realm of aviation would be to get more people involved. So it's really rewarding when you get someone to like their first solo and like they land and they're like, I just landed a plane on oh, so much studying. And I think that's the reason why it is so hard because we're trying to keep, you know, everybody safe in air travel.